Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about this really interesting and somewhat intriguing planet that was discovered back in 2018 and about which we've learned quite a lot in the last few years. The planet that seems to be the first confirmed candidate for having what we refer to as tectonic activity. In other words, this planet probably has a lot of volcanoes and also possibly even plate tectonics similar to planet Earth. But let's talk a little bit more about this planet and about how the scientists discovered all of this, starting with some of the parameters we know about this planet and what it might sort of resemble. We know that this is a planet that seems to have absolutely no atmosphere or extremely thin atmosphere. It's also extremely dark, possibly similar in color to Mercury, with somewhat dark and non-reflective surface. The temperatures here are also relatively high on one side and super low on the other side. And that's because this planet is, first of all, completely tidally locked to its parent star, which of course suggests that one of the sides is always pointing toward the star and the other side is always on the dark side. With the average temperature right here on the bright side being about 770 degrees Celsius or about 1400 Fahrenheit with the dark side possibly being close to absolute zero. And with a single orbit here only taking about 11 hours, and with the planet itself being about 1.3 times the size of planet Earth, this is actually a somewhat unusual and somewhat interesting object. It's a terrestrial planet, but it's extremely close to the parent star and thus has very, very unusual and obviously super extreme conditions on its surface, something that we don't have in the solar system. Now the best artistic representation of what the surface most likely looks like is right here. And this is of course based on several studies that establish that there is most likely no atmosphere and this is a very non-reflective dark planet. But this is actually lacking some of the more recent discoveries coming from the simulations described in the paper you can find in the description. But I guess the question here is how do we possibly know any of this? Well, by looking at the planet and also by looking at the reflections coming off this planet and specifically what's known as the phase curve, the scientists for the most part were able to figure out the atmosphere and the reflectivity of the surface. For example, here is what the phase angle or the phase curve looks like for Venus and for Mercury. And so here by looking at Venus from planet Earth and also by looking at Mercury from planet Earth, and then by comparing the phase angle, which is described in this picture, with the total magnitude of the planet, we can actually start seeing some interesting patterns. For example, for Venus, for the cloudy planet, you'll notice how it's much more shallow and it actually has this unusual brightness excess right here, usually due to the reflections from its cloud layer. For Mercury, it has no clouds and it's also a really dark planet, so it has a much more steep phase angle, which is even more steep than planet Mars. And by using this sort of analysis and by essentially comparing this to what we know about other planets, the scientists can usually determine what the exoplanet might actually contain on its surface as well. Or at least if it has clouds or no clouds, and if it has very dark regolith or dark rock, or if it has reflective surfaces. And by using this sort of analysis and combining it with numerical and computer simulations, and by simulating various types of tectonic materials and also various types of heat sources, the scientists were able to establish that this planet very likely has a lot of volcanic activity and potentially even other types of tectonic activity on the surface. With one of the better representatives of what it might look like being this moon right here known as Io, the moon of Jupiter. Although here the number of volcanoes and also just the sheer number of activity is most likely much smaller than it is on this particular planet. And what's even more interesting here is that the scientists established that all of this activity very likely happens on just one side of the planet. They're not entirely sure which side though, but they kind of think that it's probably on the side closer to the sun or closer to the star. Which of course implies that one of the sides looks something like this, possibly even more extreme, with a lot of volcanoes everywhere, yet the other side being extremely different and potentially even completely devoid of volcanoes. But unlike on planet Earth, the simulations here suggest that the flow of matter inside the planet most likely does not really circulate up and down like it does on planet Earth, as you see in this particular picture but instead seems to circulate across the entire planet. And in this case, on the hotter side, it's most likely going to be flowing upwards, whereas once the material reaches the other side of the planet, it might actually start flowing downwards. 
which suggests that there's probably a lot of volcanic activity and a lot of tectonic activity closer to the surface facing the star. But that's not entirely certain because simulations actually have showed the opposite as well. And so on whatever side the material is moving upwards, that's the side where we would expect a lot of volcanic activity. In this particular illustration, the artist decided to put the volcanoes on the dark side of the planet. And interestingly here, you can even see all sorts of emissions on this side, with the side facing the star itself being extremely dark and empty of anything. But once again, what side has the volcanoes is actually not certain because we can't really see this just yet. And this is of course very different from what we see on, for example, Io, which has volcanoes pretty much all over the surface. And it's also somewhat different from planet Earth as well, even though on our planet we do have certain locations where there are more volcanoes, such as, for example, in Hawaii or in Iceland. But at the same time, there is actually at least one object in the solar system that might have experienced something extremely similar. And sometimes we get to see this object pretty much every single day. That object is of course our moon. And today we know that the moon's surface, the one facing planet Earth, has actually undergone a tremendous amount of volcanic activity. Some scientists have even suggested that some of the recent volcanic activity was about 100 million years ago. Yet the opposite side, the one we don't really get to see with our own eyes but that we have pictures of from various missions, is exceptionally different. It does not have anything in terms of volcanoes. And the lack of volcanoes here and the huge presence of volcanoes here has been explained previously as the result of tidal activity from our planet and also as a result of various materials surfacing over time and heating up the surface of the site closer to us while leaving the other side completely intact. And so whatever is happening on the surface of the planet LHS 3844b might be extremely similar similar to the moon in the past and this is of course due to the tidal effects from its star combined with the fact that it also has extremely hot surface on one side and very cold surface on the other side and also just like the moon it doesn't really have any atmosphere which overall makes this object extremely interesting for some of the future studies but until we have better telescopes to actually look at this object and to also see if there's any volcanic outgassing like you see right here that we can possibly detect or any other features, such as actual illumination from the volcanoes, we're not really going to be able to know much more about this planet. Right now, this is still based on computer and numerical simulations, and it's also based on phase curves, which are not super accurate because this object is 48 light years away from us. But future studies, and of course future observations, might actually help us determine if this is indeed the second ever object discovered that does seem to have a lot of tectonic activity on the surface. Kind of similar to some of the other objects like, for example, Venus in the past, Moon in the past, Io in present, and of course planet Earth, which at least for now is the only object we know of that has extremely active tectonic activity, which is also responsible for preserving the biosphere of planet Earth. And so finding other planets where tectonic activity is going on is extremely important. But more important right now is for us to find better techniques to essentially learn how to identify if these planets are tectonically active. If they do have volcanoes and of course plate tectonics, those planets are going to be extremely interesting for future studies. And so hopefully thanks to studies like this, we'll be able to identify future techniques that will help us find more of these planets. But I guess for now that's sort of all we know about this planet. It's definitely exciting to know that it probably has volcanoes and maybe even plate tectonics and it might have also experienced something similar to our own moon. But I guess until future studies we're not going to know much more. So on that note, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, consider supporting this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or maybe by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description and either way, come back tomorrow to learn something else. And on that note, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.